Hello, hello again, everybody. Zag Attack is here with the Attack Live for this Thursday, January the 15th, 2015. Alright, let's get things started with the course. Billboard number ones. Well, still number ones across the board. First things first for the ninth, non consecutive week, Taylor Swift reigns supreme at the top of the album charts of 1989. Although, there might be a kicking off of sorts next week, as Megan Trader's album title could be the one that and Taylor's reign at the top of the album charts, like she did when she ended the reign of Shake It Off. Back in August, or should I say September, because remember, Shake It Off was number one single for like two weeks. Then All About That Bass ended that reign, for its big seven week wane, then Taylor Swift's Blake Space was number one for a couple weeks. Actually, Shake It Off kicked off all about that base for a second round number one. Then Blake Space kicked it off, kicking herself off. And then, of course, Uptown Funk kicked off Blake Space two weeks ago. And for the second week in a row, Uptown Funk is your number one single on the Hot 100. So, there you go with that. Taylor Swift number one album still not good. Ninth non consecutive week could be kicked off by the same woman who ended away at number one single. Megan Trainer. Well, Uptown Funk, still number one single. Now, I'm with the big news of the day, entertainment wise. The Oscar nominations are announced just days after the Golden Globes. The big nominees are two movies that won big at the uh, Golden Globes on Sunday. Nine nominations each for. My and her, uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel, she was a manga, Grand Budapest Hotel, and Birdman, top in the nomination with nine nominations, especially the big one, Best Picture. Going alongside another big winner for the Golden Globes, Boyhood, The Theory of Everything, Whiplash, The Imitation Game, American Sniper, which got no love for the Golden Globes, but got Oscar for Best Picture, along with Best Actor, Mr. Bradley Cooper. In Selma's nominated, even though, yes, Selma is nominated for Best Picture, a lot of people are interested to know that Selma's actors, which were mostly African-American, and their African-American director, female African-American director, did not get nominations at all. So despite a big, diverse year, the Oscars still nominate mostly white people. Not a lot of diversity besides the director of Birdman being a, another foreigner guy. Of sorts. Other big snubs. Lego Movie did get the nomination for Best Song. Unlike in the Golden Globes, Everything is Awesome did get the nomination for Best Song. Yet the movie did not get nominated for Best Animated Movie. Lord got snubbed, even though she was nominated in the Golden Globes for, for her song from The Hunger Games at the Golden Globes. It wasn't nominated for an Oscar. Like, they laid their way for the last two years. Besides that, other categories are the best actor. We got Steve Carell for Foxcatcher, the Alpha Mention, Bradley Cooper for American Sniper, Better Than Cumberbatch, Imitation Game. Yes, Foxcatcher is not nominated for best movie, but Steve Carell's best actor nod. Michael Keaton, who won the best actor, musical comedy, and the Golden Globes, nominated for best actor, were Eddie Redmayne, who won the best actor drama for his portrayal of Mr. Stephen Hawking for the Theory of Everything. He's nominated as well. Best Actress, we got, of course, the winners. Actually, nobody besides, I think Julianne Moore won Best Actress in a drama. She is nominated. And I think everybody else is, didn't win anything. Gone Girl didn't get any major nods besides Best Actress with Rosamund Pike. Big surprise for Marion Gautillard, Oscar winner in the past for two days, one night. Fizzy Jones getting nominations for the theory of everything. I think she was nominated, but I don't think she won. And Weez Witherspoon for Wild and Best Actress category nominees. But best Actor, we got Robert Duvall for The Judge, Ethan Hawke for Boyhood, Edward Norton for Birdman, Mark Ruffalo for Foxcatcher, and the man who won the award at the Golden Globes, J.K. Walling. Um, J.K. Simmons will see if he wins at the Oscars as well. Best Actress Supporting Role Patricia Arquette, who won the award at Golden Globes. She's going up against Emma Stone for Birdman, Meryl Streep for Into the Woods, which didn't get nominated for any Best Picture nod, Laura Dunn for a while, and Keira Knightley for The Imitation Game. In Best Animated Movie, 
I didn't mention the Lego movie that I can nominate, but the winner of the awarded Golden Globes, Hydrina Dragon 2 is nominated along with Box Trolls Big Hero 6. Those three were nominated Golden Globes. Song of the Sea and the Tale of the Princess Kagua. The uh, Book of Life did not get nominated for the Oscar like it did at the Golden Globes. So, uh, there you go with that. Besides, uh, when it comes to Best Original Song, everything is also nominated like it was at the Golden Globes. But Glory, that we did win the award at the uh, the Golden Globes is nominated for Best Song, along with Grateful Beyond the Lights, I'm Not Gonna Miss You from Glenn Campbell's movie, interesting to see that nominated, and Lost Dolls will begin again. So there you go, big Oscar nominations, some big snubs, especially when it comes to diverse city, when it comes to having more African Americans nominated, and of course females at all, let alone an African American female. Of course, the big event will be February 22nd, Hosted by Neil Patrick Harris. I think he'll do an epic job. As good as Amy and Tina did. And the Golden Globes maybe a little bit better because you can sing. But the Oscars weren't the only awards show to announce their nominations today. The Brits did as well. Because the British equivalent to the Grammy Awards, they announced their nominees today. Topping is, of course, British singers Ed Sheeran and Sam Smith, who are also the big nominees at the Grammys as well. They will take on each other for Best British Album alongside other artists like George Ezra, Royal Blood, and Alt J. And of course, for Best British Single, a lot of big nominees as a fan of it. Uh, Kevin Harris, Summer, Charlie XCS, Boom Clack, Duke DeMont, I Got You, Ed Sheeran, Thinking Out Loud, Uptown Funk, Mark it because he's British. Uh, 1D, One Direction, You and I, We the Oz, I Will Never Let You Down, Room 94, My Love, Sam Smith, Save Me, and Sigma, Nobody in Love. Of course, besides some of the British nominees, we okay, got International. Beck, Hosier, Jack White, John Legend, and Pharrell Williams going head to head for Best International Male. Uh, Beyonce, T Swizzle, Taylor Swift, Lena Del Way, Sia, and St. Vincent will be Best International Solo Artists, Female Nominees, and International Group Nods. We got The War on Drugs, Five Seconds of Summer, Black Keys, Plus Eight Kit, and The Food Fighters. Actually, I just mentioned the nominees for Best British Video. That was not Best British Single nominees. That was Best British Video. Best British Single nominations, I think mostly the same, with some differences. Kevin Harris, Summer, Clean Band, They'd Rather Be, Duke DeMont, I Got You, Ed Sheeran, Thinking Out Loud, Ella Henderson's Ghost. Jones and George as well for Budapest. Mark Monson, Uptown Funk, Room 94, My Love, Stay With Me, Sam Smith, and Nobody to Love, I'm Sigma. And the first couple of performers have been announced for the Brits, including Taylor Swift, Ed Sheeran, and Sam Smith. Speaking of award shows, specifically music awards, any performers, so did the Grammys announcing their performers. Their first set of performers. Now, there were some that were women, including Madonna, which is official now, along with ACDC. They're performing for the first time ever in the Grammys. Madonna, for the first time solo since 2006, she appeared during Michael Moore's performance last year. Other uh, performers will include Ed Sheeran, Ariana Grande, and Eric Church. Now, Ed Sheeran is the only nominee for Album of the Year that's performing thus far at the Grammys. We'll see if all the other album of the year nominees do get added to the Grammy Awards. That will, of course, take place on February 8th from Los Angeles at the Staples Center. While the Brits, I forget which that date of the Brits, I don't know the date of the Brits yet. Uh... February 25th will be the Brits. I think they'll air live in the U.S. on, I think, a uh, Fuse has been airing it in America. So that's the Brits date. Like the Grammys adding performers. And Brits announcing their nominations and adding performers as well. Now, on to some big festival news. Man, a lot of festivals have been announced in the lineup for the last couple of weeks. Last week, of course, Coachella announced their lineup of ACDC, among others. Bonnaroo announced their lineup on Tuesday via a live stream. 
Some of the big performers on the bottom lineup, which would be, of course, June 11th to the 14th in Manchester, Tennessee. Billy Joel, that's interesting to have him headlining. Mumford and Sons, Dan Malice being the headliners, along with Kendrick Lamar, Florence and Machine, My Morning Jacket, Robert Plant, Slayer Jose, Jonas Gambino, Alabama Shakes. I'm just mentioning some of the names, there's a lot of people. Gary Clark Jr., Upwood and Fire, Tears for Fears, Tove Low, Against Me, among many, many others, on the big lineup for the Bollywood Festival in, of course, Tennessee. Well, they announced their lineup. Rock and Wheel adds more to their lineup. Of course, Rock and Wheel will be making its North American debut in April, in May, should I say, in Las Vegas, Nevada. They added a bunch of new artists for the two weekends, a Rock Weekend and a Pop Weekend. Just in general, they're adding Sam Smith, Falls of the People, Jesse J. I think they're probably Pop. I think Falls of the People probably Rock, but I think Jesse and Sam would be probably Pop. Along with Pretty Reckless, Echo Smith, Hollywood Undead, Empire of the Sun, Charlie XCS, Max Magic, and Tovlo B added to the lineup. Along with the already previously announced lineups for the Pop, Taylor Swift, Bruno Mars, Ed Sheeran, among others, for the pop, along with John Legend, Josh Stone, and of course, the rock only big headliners, no doubt, in Metallica, Lincoln Park, among others, for that big night. That's, of course, May 9th and the 10th, May 8th and 9th for the rock, May 15th, 16th for the pop weekend in Vegas. Speaking of Vegas, well, she's not performing at a festival in Vegas, Maya Carey is announcing a Vegas state of her own, a residency. Now, Judy announced a residency last week. So it's why I care. She's been touring a lot and been playing with vocal problems and criticisms towards that. But instead of touring, she's going to be doing Vegas. She announced it on Ellen DeGeneres. And uh, I think they did not announce a date yet. But she is announcing a Vegas state. Like I said, there's no specific date. On when her show, number ones, will start in Vegas. But at least she's announcing the stint will happen. Hey, a lot of people down there, especially a lot of uh, pop people and rock people. Britney Spears is down there right now at Planet Hollywood. So now Brian Carey is another big female pop star to be headlining Vegas starting May the 6th. Yeah, May 6th is the first day of her Vegas stint. So there you go. Brian Carey doing Vegas starting May 6th. Now, another band is not doing Vegas stint per se, but they're doing a tour. Fall Out Boy announces their tour. They will be in Vegas, but not for a residency. Part of their tour. Promoting their latest album, American Beauty, American Psycho, coming out next week. Now, of course, last summer they went on the the, the big tour with Paramore. Last year on the uh, Monument Tour. Monument Tour. But this tour, which is called the Boys of Summer, that's with a Z, Zama, they'll be joined by hip hopper Wiz Khalifa. Very unique and weird lineup. Promoted with a very funny promo video of the tour, which will also feature Hootie Allen opening up for them. Will feature them, and it'll start on June the 10th in Kevin, New Jersey. There will be without, I think there'll be a few dates without Wiz. But Detroit will be one of them. Detroit will have Wiz Khalifa on July the 10th at Pine Knob. They will also be in Toronto. I mentioned Vegas. They'll be in New York, Tennessee, Texas, among other states and great cities. So there you go. Follow boy. Following the tour with Paramore last year. They're touring with Wiz Khalifa this summer on the Boys of Summer Tour starting in June. It'll be in Detroit, Michigan in July. So there you go. That's it for the attack line for today. Thank y'all for watching that mine. Y'all been attacked by the news from Zach. See you later. Yeah.